Your education systems have confused you that memory is intelligence. You remember some rubbish that you have read and write it your first rank. By reading ten books, somebody becomes a scholar. By reading hundred books, somebody becomes a doctor. By just reading one book, somebody becomes a representative of God. Even when I was in school, I always wondered, these people who just read a book a few years ahead of me, why are they strutting around like they're superior human beings? Bharat, widely known as India, a country which is diverse, rich in its culture and traditions, has three pillars of influence for it to move forward and they are vastly prioritized to education, entertainment and news. Leaving aside the other two that is entertainment and news, what we feel is education shapes the future of the country. Even today, discussing the education system in India is the heated discussion all over the country, but yet no conclusions or results. This made us move forward and get you with the next interesting episode and here we are. You're watching UniY and let's take a deep dive on why Indian education system sucks. Indian education system sucks. Is it just the statement or the living reality of India? Before seeing it in just one perspective, where every article we read, the videos we watch are always showing the one-sided story where either they are blaming the teachers or institutes or are always targeted saying that kids are forced in this system. But what we should like to ask is who are systems? Who are society? Is it the tangible thing or living animal we are just trying to complain and blame one after another? Don't you feel? Do not forget that we are the system and society all together. So when you are watching this episode, you will watch the deep dive on all the three aspects – parent, teacher and student. But before we start blaming ourselves, why don't we even question once, like is this really the same case or situation for us around thousands of years ago? The answer is big no. Then what exactly happened? Once upon a time, there were temples everywhere in India. Every city, every town, every village had a temple. Temples were more than place of worship. They were centers of education. Every village, temple provided basic education to children. Larger temples provided higher education. Subjects taught ranged from mathematics to astronomy to medicine. These temple schools were run very efficiently. The Islamic invasions destroyed the temple education system in North India and to some extent in South too. Temples were destroyed by the thousands, millions of Indians were murdered, millions more enslaved. They destroyed India's great universities such as Nalanda, Vikramashila and more. With much of our temples and universities destroyed and millions of sacred texts burned, India started losing much of its ancient knowledge and wisdom. Fast forward to the British occupation of India. At the beginning, our literacy rate was around 50%. The British systematically began undermining age-old institutions like temples and gurukuls. The British abolished indigenous Indian industries like the textile industry and forced hundreds of millions into destitution and starvation. This was a time when Thomas Babington Macaulay was appointed to the so-called Supreme Council of India in 1834. Macaulay reformed education in India. He introduced English language based education in India. And even today his words are yet being remembered and we quote, I have travelled across the length and breadth of India and I have not seen even one person who is a beggar, who is a thief. Such wealth I have seen in this country, such high moral values, people of such calibre that I do not think we would ever conquer this country unless we break the every backbone of this nation which is her spiritual and cultural heritage and therefore I propose that we replace her old and ancient education system, her culture for if the Indians think that all that is foreign and English is good and greater than their own. They will lose their self-esteem, their native self-culture and they will become what we want them, a truly dominated nation. And we quote, Macaulay created a class of anglicized Indians 
who served the British in ruling India. The Macaulay education system was designed to create clerks and pupils. There is no emphasis on actual learning. Macaulayan education emphasizes rote memorization and absolute obedience. It stifles imagination, creativity, and intellectual development. It creates robots and slaves. After independence in 1947, the Congress Party allowed the Macaulay model of education to flourish. Today, every school, college, and university in India follows the same system. Students are expected to memorize and not to understand what they actually study. They are not allowed to question the teacher. Rot learning is over glorified. Students pass exams by simply memorizing. Exam questions are repeated every year and moving even forward till today we see the same things are being continued till now. When kids are being taught at home to draw the circle and fill it with color and if by mistake the color comes out of the circle then we know what parents have told that kid. When a kid grows up and starts studying in school and he asks something which strikes his mind to the teacher then the teacher has one simple sentence to tell that it is out of the syllabus or it is not important for exams. When the same kid and student grows up and comes to this time of taking decisions, he has been asked to take the decision within the streams so famously known as science, commerce and arts. If he chooses even for science out of peer pressure, he will not be able to get through it. Then at last, again the mistake is of student. So systematically we are yet following the same old system of Macaulay who had given it to Britishers to just make us either accountants or today famously known as clerks. Now let's ask the question ourselves, whom should we blame? Is it teachers, parents or students? Anyone among us will say one simple answer, it's the system. And it's totally true. Why? Because today everyone whom we are surrounded with are the products or byproducts of the same old system of Macaulay. The teachers we learn from or the parents are all from the same system which we never thought or even if are thinking to change and it's because in the hands of the political system. And this only changes when the education policy changes. So if we are blaming someone then we are blaming ourselves. Here is some data collected from tests and surveys with Indian students that shows the lack in our education system. Only 40% of our teenage students can calculate the price of a shirt sold at a 10% discount and less than 60% could read the time from an analog clock. And less than 17% of India's graduates are employable. Rest 83% are unemployed. From this data, we all can easily make out that children are going to school but not learning. When children are in school, they are either unaware of how little they are learning or afraid to speak up. And in these situations, parents often choose to exit the school system rather than pressuring it to change. We also agree that in spite of such an education system, students are doing well. But remember, they are only few and even most of their approach tends to be static and bookish and focus only on cramming the subjects. There will soon be 100 million underskilled and underemployed youngsters on the streets of our country. As a result of this, many will be either diverted, leading them to harass, loot and molest others or depressed to harm themselves. A student commits suicide every hour in India. Unable to handle pressure, unable to fulfill their aspirations, cope up with their failures and find support. But after seeing all this, we also cannot forget that we are the same country where we are the ones who had the best universities of all the time like Takshila and Nalanda University. But it's all after the Britishers ruling that Macaulay introduced his way of teaching, so we are yet the byproducts of the same system what they had introduced to make their workers. And we were compensated to work which we never liked to work. Being said and done. Now it's time for us to move forward towards the solutions. In our entire culture and the society we always have two options to live our life. Either we have to be the part of the problem or be the part of solutions. 
and choosing the second one moving forward we will see what can be done to better change our education system replace cramming with creativity and thinking reward original thinking research creativity etc innovative and creative ideas which deserve highest academic accolades should be often discussed in the classes practical knowledge should be increased instead of focusing the evaluation on a 3 hour exam the focus of evaluation should be classroom participation by a student projects communication and leadership skills and extracurricular activities personalized teaching one size does not fit all hence the education system needs to develop and customize according to the students technological advancements in education it is scientifically proven that kids tend to learn more through interactive learning teaching rather than just verbal teaching therefore interactive learning through field trips experiments smart board classes etc can really take learning into a next level remove reservation so this has to happen at the earliest possible time because any kind of reservation if it lasts for too long it will become a discriminatory process which is what you're talking about a student can do higher studies because of the quota system whereas another student doesn't get that opportunity for the same reason therefore by this reservation system one part of the society becomes well educated whereas the other part becomes victimized focus on skill based education it is often said if you teach a man a skill you enable him for a lifetime in most cases knowledge is forgotten after the semester exam is over so what says with you is skills and vague patterns educators should be well trained teachers play the most important role in schools and hence they should be well trained and well qualified after all they are shaping the future of the nation the children while teaching they should create a congenial and interesting atmosphere where students can feel the empathy and learn as much as possible in the classroom teach them with the purpose of education our education system is still having the features that colonial educators had built education is not always about becoming a big and rich person it should also be about humanism Students must also be taught in depth about the morals of life and inculcated with humanistic values. Seeing to the ways to change education system, hoping for the best to come. So for now it's time for us to sign off and before sign off we would like to also mention that new education policy 2019 has been drafted and soon will be implemented. Being said that we would like to know what are your views on changing the current education system. how you would contribute to change india's second pillar of influence let us know these things in comments below and do even tell us which question would you like us to do next and remember if you don't know why ask it on uniy we will see you in the next episode until then have a good one